Okay. So I'm happy that I was emceeing the first day, the first hour here, and I'm closing. So yeah, that makes me happy. And also makes me happy that we're going to be talking peer to peer. This was supposed to be a panel, but some people had to leave already. And even we thought that about canceling, but I think it's, it's a very important topic about uh, buying Bitcoin peer to peer. And, and I have a very long experience with some um, uh, platforms, uh, exchanges, how it call, call, call it how you want. And I think it can be very interesting. And also, uh, first, I, I, w I wanted to ask you if you could do a little introduction uh, about you and what you do. And I think we can start from there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Grafton. I work on the Vexel app, which is a mobile app that allows you to peer to peer with a like, reputation model that's based on your web of trust. Uh, without KYC. Uh, we're a nonprofit and we want to create a tool that allows people to have the freedom to transact with people that they know and the people that they know. So uh, we're trying to make something that makes Bitcoin as it was intended to be, uh, which is peer to peer purely without KYC and without a trusted third party. That's great. It's, it's very interesting that um, this talk that uh, we just uh, heard, it was very convenient for the conversation we're having today because it, it, uh, you, you read the white paper and in the first sentence you read, like, basically Satoshi discovered a way of doing a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Yeah. So he was very interested in being able to transact without intermediaries. So basically to be able to be outside the system that we have. And I don't know, I suppose because, uh, yeah, this uh, adoption, convenience, and so on, uh, made centralized exchanges appear, Mt. Gox maybe me being the first very big one and massive, and we know what happened after. Uh, but from that point on, I believe that buying in centralized exchanges was easy. But from, like, I would say, two to three years ago, Buying in centralized exchanges is a nightmare. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Is if you meet somebody and you have a taxi and you orange pill them, right? And they ask you, okay, I've learned about Bitcoin, so how do I actually buy it, right? Well, depending on who you ask, you get a million different answers. Here's my referral link. Here's this. Give your, you know, you have to give your documentation, take a selfie, give your shoe size even. Uh, and what we aim to do is to be able to answer that question and say, just do download this app. Uh, connect with the people that you know, and you have that web of trust there. So even if you don't know about Bitcoin, you might meet someone that you actually do know based on your web of trust that allows you to say, hey, man, also, do you have a recommendation of a good way to self-custody it? Or, you know, you have a beer. Um, if you're doing an on-chain transaction, you might want to sit down and wait for your transactions to confirm and, and get a little bit of education as well. Uh, but Lightning has really made it easy to meet someone quickly uh, and do a quick trade with them. And the other thing about it is the community aspect is the more people that you tell about Vexel, the larger your network grows and the easier it becomes to buy something uh, on there. So it's like, I know a guy that knows a guy. When you visit a new city, whether that be Prague in the Czech Republic, which is where I live, uh, you go to say, okay, where do you ask a friend, what's a good restaurant? You shouldn't go to TripAdvisor and eat at the first restaurant on TripAdvisor. We all know a person who knows a person who has a good recommendation. And through that web of trust model, it allows you to like succeed and have a good first interaction with Bitcoin in a way that is privacy preserving, but also peer to peer the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's, it's the way that it's supposed to be. And I have to thank regulators because of thanks to them, it became so difficult to buy in centralized platforms that it makes even more sense to use peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, webs, apps, uh, systems. And I want to bring them on. Uh, we have, I would say, BISC as the one of the beginners and the very strong and decentralized mentality. We have uh, HODL HODL. We have Lightning Peer-to-Peer -peer Bot, RoboSats, Peach, Bexel. Uh, there is plenty of. And what is important, in my opinion, I don't know what you think about it, is that we need to remind us why are we, why do we want to use Bitcoin? It's because probably we are some 
somehow running from a system that is not making us feel good. Uh, that is, uh, as Sailor would say, that uh, we have a money system that is melting in our hands, no? and we're trying to catch the drops, but it's still melting. So we're running from something. So why going again in the same mistakes? So do you want to get Bitcoin? Use peer-to-peer. Get Bitcoin without KYC and you will get the superpower of Bitcoin without KYC. If you buy Bitcoin in centralized platforms, your data will be stored and also you will not be able to use Bitcoin with superpowers. You, If you open Lightning channels, if you do whatever, if you want to spend it in Bitrefill, somebody can be looking what are you doing to that. If you buy KYC free with all these apps, with any of these apps, you will be able to do whatever you want with your money because it will be yours. 100%. Exactly. And also, you know, with, with Vexel, you do see this circular economy aspect of it as well as even if you don't have money to buy Bitcoin, maybe you have a skill, maybe you do backend development. And we've actually heard stories, you know, we like to joke that we're Tinder for Bitcoiners uh, because we've heard stories of people saying, okay, I want to earn some Bitcoin. I'm pretty good at backend development. Based on your web of trust and the people that you know, you get a little job here and there. And the next thing you know, you're hired on and you're earning a job in Bitcoin and you're able to stack even more in that economy. You have farmers who have honey and have bees and eggs and chickens. And these people are also saying, well, I'd like to get some Bitcoin. Uh, I think about six months ago, the going rate for one egg was like about a thousand sats or so. Uh, But we've even seen horses on there. And so you really have that aspect of you're participating in something and you're doing it together. And, you know, now I got a a guy for honey and I get to pay him in Bitcoin. Yeah. And we saw here an initiative in, in Madeira, the, the place to be, you know, and I think it's uh, it's somehow connected with peer-to-peer because peer-to-peer apps and buying Bitcoin peer-to-peer and selling Bitcoin peer-to-peer takes you to people, no? Connects you to people. And that also, this mentality takes you to meetups. Exactly. And that's, that's what I'm saying is, is the more people you tell, the more your community grows and the more access you have to no KYC peer, peer-to-peer Bitcoin. And when you meet somebody is, you know, we, we like coming to these events because we make friends and we make friends that have the same things in common. Uh, I'm sure I've talked to many of you and you know that I enjoy talking to you and you learn stuff from each other. And that's the community aspect of it. If you have a community of people who are, you know, talking about Bitcoin and talking about what they can spend Bitcoin on and how they can work in Bitcoin, then it naturally more people get excited about it. And that's the thing that I love is when I meet somebody, you can really see their passion and the excitement on their face when, you know, your wallets magically send each other, like, you know, sats to each other. So that's the, the really aspect that I love. And, you know, I've spent time traveling around and going to Italy and I'm going to Spain actually next or next week uh, to experience like different communities and how, how they interact with each other. Um, and I was in Italy in December and they, they have such a wonderful community of, you know, you go to the meetups and you see people peer to peering at the meetups, uh, but you can't go to a meetup every day, but you can still meet a Bitcoiner on any day with something like Vexel because it allows you to have access to that web of trust again. And that's where if you continue to grow that, then it becomes normal and you have to normalize doing things that are convenient, not exa- again, signing up at a centralized exchange and connecting to your bank accounts. You know, mm-hmm. that seems to me a bit excessive. Yeah. Shout out to BTC Maps uh, because... This is also another aspect interesting from peer-to-peer mentality is that uh, when you travel, you, you are n- you're never going to be alone. Thanks to Bitcoin, you're never going to be alone. Uh, you have initiatives like BTC Map where you can check uh, what's going on in that place and probably you will find a meetup. And even if you don't have the national currency of that place, uh, you will be able to, to sell some Bitcoin so that you can have uh, some currency for the days that you are there. And, and this is all thanks to the magic of peer-to-peer. So I, I think it's, it's a big, big feature to know how to use these tools. Um, and, and I would highly encourage people to do so because you will feel that the world becomes a smaller place and a warmer place. Exactly. And, it, you know, it's like I'm in Madeira. We have euros here. I live in the Czech Republic where we have Czech crowns. So I, I really don't want to take euros back to, to Prague with me, but I definitely want to take Bitcoin. So I can meet someone here at the conference who maybe lives here or is going on that's in in that. But what's what's really cool about that is, is the more you, you continue to do it, the easier it becomes. So no matter where you go, you can 
find the local currency by selling your Bitcoin even if you need to spend money in a place that doesn't accept Bitcoin yet. Uh, and then you have another opportunity there uh, to continue to grow that network. And what Vexel and what, what we're so different is we are a nonprofit. We wanted to simply make this easier for everyone because this is a system that we want to participate in. If I earn money in Bitcoin and it takes me time to convince my landlord to finally accept Bitcoin, well, he hasn't yet. So I need to actually pay him in cash every single month. Um, being a former, you know, in living in Bosnia, he prefers cash over anything. Um, and I think we're coming there with Bitcoin. Uh, but I have to sell Bitcoin and I need to be able to do that to pay him. Uh, I, I think that we, what we're talking here, we don't have much more time, but it's, it's, uh, I think it's nice because um, uh, we're putting in words that peer-to-peer -peer is a philosophy. Absolutely. We have yeah. tools, we have meetups, uh, we have many things, no? but uh, at the end it's a philosophy. And I want to bring something that um, a very well-known uh, person in Spain told me on a podcast is that... Um, these guys ruling us, they want us separated. They want us alone. Because then when you are alone, you are basically, you are, you are afraid and you will uh, accept anything the, the ruler tells you. And we need the opposite. We need to connect. We need to peer. And we need, and then he gave me an example that I didn't know. I don't even know if it's true, but at least for the sake of the story, it works. That is that sequoias, this, the big trees, I don't know if they are pronounced like this in, in, in English, um, they don't have very deep roots, but they are strong and they hold, uh, be, even being so tall and so thick, they, they, they hold themselves because they have another sequoia next to them. So it's like having peers next to you that you can be strong and be the tallest and the biggest tree and the most well-known around the world. And it's, uh, it's us who have to build this Sequoia network. Yeah, and y y you can also like look at the, the world, how the world's changed is, you know, we have some sort of weird social anxiety, it seems. We're, we're hide behind our phones. We don't talk to each other on the phone anymore. My friends still say, please just text me. And the thing about peer-to-peer -peer is when you're together and you actually start talking, you, you start learning from each other in a much more way because you're having real conversations, not short, quick ones. And exactly, that's a, a really good analogy with the, with the Sequoia trees is that, you know, you have to build something big that can last and you can only do that by actually talking in with each other. And when you do that, it's like when I see someone that I have 32 common connections with on Vexel, if I don't know who the person is, I probably want to get to know them or I at least want to, I should know them, you know, because that's a person that a lot of my trusted contacts are also friends with and that's why it works because you, you build it out and you make it strong. Whenever breaks, I, when everything will break, because at some point uh, things are going to get nasty, we need to have that network ready. So I encourage that you create and you become a node in your area, in your meetup area, and you start creating very good relationships with those peers, because maybe in the future will be um, what can save you or give, at least give you a hand when you need it. Yeah. And, and, you know, just the last thing about it is, is, you know, you only see the offers that are in your network. So you don't see random offers from random strangers. Is you, back, so you, mean. you see your web of trust and your web of trust only. So if you see something there, it's because it's in your network and you can have that reputation model. Yeah. Again, as I said, there is plenty of tools. I highly encourage to try them all. Uh, there is a use case for any of them. And the, what I like from all these tools is that they don't put shit on the other tools because they know that they are on the same side of the story. The enemy is not the other developer uh, of a peer-to-peer -peer tool. The enemy is the person that doesn't want us to connect and to keep growing those communities. Yeah, But please like, go check us out. Do your homework. I always tell people, be skeptical, right? Is if you see something, we're fully open source. If you see something, say something. And we want to know what works for you. What If you have a community, what could help your community grow further? We want to hear about it because we want to make a tool that allows you to have that freedom to transact with the people that you know and they know. So check out Vexel, uh, V-E-X-L. Uh, we always say, how do you get Bitcoin? You Vexel it. So Vexel.it. Uh, check us out, please. We're at yeah. the Google Play and, and iOS on test flight.
It was a very nice conversation, and Thanks. I'm happy that we had it. Me too. And if uh, somebody has questions, uh, you can catch me, catch Kim afterwards, and uh, I, we will be happy to answer. Thank you, and thank you, Bitcoin Atlantis. It thank was you. a great stage.